YouTube. I got a mnemonic for you guys to remember the sort of symptoms and anecdotes for mercury toxicity. So I have this picture. We got two kids, maybe middle schoolers. They're in the hallways and they're getting in a little scuffle. Um, so this this student here, his name's Lewis, and I'll explain why in a second. He's broken the thermometer. We can see the thermometer here of this foreign exchange student. He's British, which I'll explain why in a second. And you can see there in this hallway, there's this gaudy sort of um, middle school painting on the wall. And we have a broken intercom and a clock. So what this represents is um, on the ground, the broken thermometer, of course, represents mercury toxicity. And mercury toxicity in general is usually due to the mo most po potent form of mercury um, is methylmercury. The reason being is it's more bioavailable to um, have negative consequences in the body in a, the methyl um, mercury form. Um, one way to remember that is I've drawn these these um, pictures up here. These two balls connected together. One of them can re represent mercury. The other can represent the methyl group. Or you can also think of it just as a thermometer, where the bulb of the thermometer represents the mercury and the long um, stem represents the methyl group. Um, so the anecdotes for mercury toxicity, if given in the right times and in the right situations, are uh, British anti-leucite uh, and penicillamine. Um, so here I have this British student, he's beating up Lewis, so he's British anti-leucite. Um, a little way to remember that. It's also called BAL for British anti-leucite, and furthermore it's also called dimercaparol. So you may see any of those three names, BAL, British anti-leucite, or dimercaparol. So I've given them uh, two purple distinct caps to remember dimercaparol. Uh, furthermore, I've given the British student a pencil behind his ear because he's a mean guy with a pencil, so he represents penicillamine. Um, I've also decided to make this a fight because the symptoms of mercury toxicity is actually a, similar to a uh, permanent fight or flight response. Um, so that's to say you have elevated catecholamines. Um, the reason being is that methylmercury um, inactivates the enzyme uh, catecho-O-methyltransferase. So that's responsible for metabolizing the catecholamines. So that's uh, norepinephrine, epinephrine, and dopamine. So the symptoms of toxicity are going to be similar to uh, pheochromocytoma, which you may know is a adrenal tumor where uh, adrenaline and um, noradrenaline are secreted in large amounts from that tumor. Um, so what are the effects of that? You're going to have, you know, you're going to feel like you're in a fight. You're going to have um, maybe uh, a tachycardia. Um, you're going to have um, the systemic effects of um, epinephrine being um, uh, vasoconstriction in your skin um, and uh, so forth, the, the, the effects of um, epinephrine. So we also have irritability and tremors, which also could be arguably attributed to high epinephrine state. Um, another condition you're going to have is a pink rash in some, some situations of mercury toxicity. So I've drawn Lewis here, he spilled the mercury liquid on his arm, and so that pre represents the pink rash. Also, I've uh, drawn these um, pink lockers in the background to represent the pink rash. It's an exfoliating rash, and it's such a distinctive um, feature that they've got a name for it, and it's called pink disease. Um, so you could imagine these lockers opening off, representing um, the skin exfoliating off in this pink disease. Um, another effect of um, high epinephrine is going to be salivation. So um, salivation, I've got um, Lewis getting punched in the face here. And actually one of his teeth is flying out and with a bunch of saliva coming out of his mouth. Um, the reason why I have teeth is because uh, mercury toxicity also can cause loose teeth and um, gum abnormalities, um, as you'd guess, um, uh, potentially leading to loosened teeth. Um, what else do we have here? So slurred speech. So Lewis getting punched in the face and slurring his apologies. Sorry. Um, 
remind you of slurred speech. Um, fornication happening early, so I have this ant on his shirt because the Latin word for ant is something like for me. And fornication obviously means a sense of having ants crawling under your skin, so that's going to be burning itchiness or irritation um, on your skin. Um, and that's, again, as I say, a fairly early symptom. Also, you're going to have ataxia. So I have this Lewis, this British dude um, manhandling Lewis and making him have these abnormal movements um, remind you of ataxia. It's important to note that the half-life of um, mercury in the body is about 55 days. And so I've put the clock here on the 55 after the hour. Um, which is about the time when students are roaming around the halls, maybe getting ready to go to their next class. Um, so that's to say, if you take uh, inadvertently take is a amount of um, mercury, and then two months pass, half that mercury is out of your body, so it doesn't um, permanently stay in your body. Um, Theochromocytoma, I've mentioned, and. Um, I hope I mentioned that this COM represents um, COMT to remind us that uh, COMT is inactivated by methylmercury. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is Minimata disease, which is um, Minimata was a, a town that was poisoned by a company uh, that was pouring mercury waste into their water and that bioaccumulated and caused a serious and ongoing um, human and natural disaster in Japan. So what I've done here is I've drawn Minimata on this clock to remind us of Minimata disease um, being associated with mercury toxicity. The reason why I drew it on the clock is because Minimata to me sounds like a brand of a, a Japanese uh, watch or clock. Um, I think I've mentioned basically everything here so um, if you liked the video, if it helped you out, please hit like and cheers guys. Have a good day.